Well, everything was going just fine until suddenly uranium. Yes, I've been reading about it. It's a fever, it's a disease. And the one that's got it the worst is my father-in-law. But he's been that way all his life. It cost me $300 to get him back from Alaska. He was after gold that time. He's a dreamer, Mr. Martin, just a dreamer. He's been looking for a pot of gold all his life. And the old fool's never found a thing and he never will. What's your problem, Mr. Stevens? Do you think he's lost? That's right. Well, where do you think he is? I don't know. He's somewhere up in the hills. All I know is he burst into my store last week and he handed me this piece of rock. And he was so excited he could hardly talk. He rushed in and he took two days' provisions and he rushed right out again to go and stake his claim. Well, that was five days ago and I haven't heard a word from him since. Here we are at beautiful Trenwith Mine in St. Ives, Cornwall. Yeah, like this is all a mine here that these houses are built on. We're going? Oh, you don't have your safety glasses on, I know. Josh. I told you. Yeah. Oh. Yes. Now, how big a sample do you oh. think we're going to get? I mean, with your bad shoulder and all. Oh. oh. He's a man of action. Job well done. Let me check this. Sure. And this guy probably thinks it's just insane, people. These are rock, rock stars. <laughs> Hotter than the hops of hell.
have the information you want. Now you're talking. What have you got? There is a big shipment of uranium going out of here. There's always uranium going out of Zaire. Somebody paid double for this. And in advance, who made the deal? Listen, I was promised a $10,000 bonus if I came through for you guys. Okay. Okay, don't you trust me? Sure I trust you. I even love you. But you Mossad people still have to pay me for the Uganda job. Remember? I'm going back to my business. You know where to find me. Oh. I almost forgot. Tell the bosses in your Mossad to test this. What is it? Uranium. Yellow cake. Um, is it uh, radioactive? You'll know when uh, you blow up. All right, we just left Natarita and uh, we're on 90, headed for Long Park Road, up into uh, the Rim Rock. We're gonna find some uranium today. We're totally stoked. Well, the Carnotite should be just about ready. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think it's done. What do you think? From the California mountains into New Mexico Across the state of Arizona where the Gila River flows In the mountains down in Texas all along the Rio Grande from Mohawk, Colorado, out across the Utah sand. They are searching every mountain, they are turning every stone. The strangest band of hunters that the West has ever known. While they trot across the desert as if guided by a star. They are searching, ever searching, oh, what are they searching for? While this uranium fever's eyes got them on the go While they stand their faces, something I will never know But they go right on a searching, just hoping they will find the Hidden far off in the mountains, are a rich uranium mine And they're up before the sun They hunt with Geiger counters Instead of with a gun They're not bothered by the weather While well, they're always on the go They don't seem to mind the desert sun Or the winter snow They may never find a strike But hope is always there Far deep inside each one's a wish to be a millionaire It's not silver they are seeking, it's not gold of any kind They're not searching through the mountains for the old lost Dutchman mine While this uranium fever's eyes got them on the go this is something I will never know But they go right on a searching Just hoping they will find Hidden far off in the mountains Are a rich uranium mine I volunteered in the, into the Navy in 1941 And was discharged, medical discharge They didn't take me So they suggested that I come back And go to the work at this Manhattan Project, which was operated by the Army. And in 1940, late 42, I worked at this Army plant, and they didn't call it the Manhattan Project at that time. It was just the Army Mill, what everybody knew around here. There were guards posted and high security around, and they wouldn't allow any cameras. So 
so there's very few pictures of anything on the Manhattan Project. I worked there until it finished, then I, I was off for a few years and went back to Union Carbide in 1950 after that. Here we have an extraordinary sample of uranium ore here at the Teapot Dome Mine. Let's see how this little baby reads, shall we? Not too bad for its size. It might cleave and it's... Here it is, General Groves. Plutonium. Well, that's the uh, first I've ever seen. But uh, after this, if you don't mind, I wish you'd uh, hold something under it. Because after all, there's about over $50 million in that too. stuff has basically hasn't been touched since it was dumped here. If you go about a foot and a half or so underneath the, even this, this fine grain material here, you come into uh, rocks and material that, uh, that, that's very large and you pull stuff out and just keep on pulling out, pulling out, pulling out, not even actually digging. It's just incredible. You can drop a probe in there and uh, it'll go down three and four to five feet in the cracks. It's going nuts. Oh, ho, ho, look at that coating. Cool. <laughs> nice. I love it when the meters pin. Oh, yes. <laughs> this will hopefully be another successful expedition for dangerous laboratories. You tested all of the elements, you're sure of that, Marie? Yes, I'm positive, Pierre. And you found that only two of them, uranium and thorium, gave off rays. That's right. Then you measured the uranium and thorium in the pitch blend ore. And that's when I ran into trouble. The pitch blend had more radioactivity than I could explain by the amount of uranium and thorium it had in it. Here is crude pitch blend. Now we know that the rays come from the uranium and the thorium that are in this pitch blend. Those two elements give off the rays. Correct. I put the pitch blend in this mortar. Has the mortar always been clean? Always, and grind it up. Here is the ground pitch blend, still with the uranium and thorium in it. I always fill the dish level full. This is the way I've done it every time. And I place it in the electrometer. Now I close the case so there's no draft. Good. Now I charge the electrometer. All right, here comes the survey team. Say, Seth, have you found anything interesting today? No, not today. <laughs> Let's see. Not Whoop. a lot of blips on the old meter. Yes, actually, it's looking pretty good. It's looking great. You're, you're pretty close to something. Oh, good. Pinpoint Jesus, it down. Keep digging. Keep digging. Oh, what shall we find? <laughs> hey, Dave, we got a hot one. Mary had a golden chain. It's a link spell my Jesus name. Try here now. What here, right here. What the hell are we trying to find? Little uranium. Uranium. Alright. Look at that. We got a good one. It's gagging up a storm near. Oh yes, we're counting geigers like there's no tomorrow. So that's uranium, eh? That sure is. I know, yeah, I did. And it's at your ground. Is. <laughs> I can see Seth's Oh, God. Okay. I'm all right. Yeah, and then the camera would have been rolling. <laughs> Back in the early 1950s, I had an uncle, George Anderson, who was my boss up at the Lamartine mine when uh, he was decided to strike it out and look for uranium in uh, Utah. 
we had a lot of uranium in Colorado, a much higher quality a lot of it than what you found in Utah, but it was very difficult to process, harder rock. Those sandstones were easier to process, leach and such. So he went out there, and first of all, later on, excuse me, if you have, have you ever heard of the big Indian in Monticello, Utah? He discovered it, George Anderson, my uncle. And it, it's quite a story on that. I got a little bit of that in that book I wrote, you know, called Hot Rock Derelicts. You might have read some of that, because I think you read the book, didn't you? Anyway, uh, we went out on the camp. Uh, I was just a kid then, basically. And some of the things I put in the book that I remembered was uh, how we used to entertain ourselves at night. Uh, during the daytime, I was my job was to prospect for uranium with a Geiger counter. And my, uh, my uncle's uh, brother, would fly his small plane with a scintillator dropped from the wing along these rims of the canyons and he'd radio down to me where to go look, you know, with a field Geiger counter like you guys got here. And of course I didn't like snakes with the dam and I always had a revolver hanging on my waist for a snake, but I never did see one. They felt sorry for me and left me alone and there were supposed to be a lot of rattlers out there. A few scorpions, they didn't bother me, but the rattlers I was a little concerned about, but never did see one and there was a lot of them out there. It's really, I think they just felt sympathy, you know. Uh, or else they knew I was going to shoot them. <laughs> we didn't go to town very often, and the morale would often get kind of low, because the guys don't like being around each other. You like to have a woman now and then, you know. In fact, one time, these maybe I shouldn't tell you this. For sake of woman, can you edit this out if you think it's not good? Okay. Uh, one of these guys went to town one time and found this woman that liked to earn some extra money. And she was going to help the cook with the cooking, see, and earn some extra money otherwise. Well, that looked like a great idea, but we didn't have much sanitation out there, you know. We had to call in our water, and there wasn't a place to take a bath too well, you know. Well, after a few days of that woman out there, the boss hauled her back to town. It didn't smell good anymore. We just said it was better not to have her. This is stuff I shouldn't be telling you, maybe, but that's history anyway, huh? Today we are reaching into the core of nature itself for a source of energy so great that one ounce of matter can yield enough energy to light this 100 watt bulb for one million years. Ample electric power so that eaves of every age can live their lives fruitfully in their electrical gardens of Eden. E man, I'm gonna find that. some uranium. <laughs> okay, here we are, pulling into Jim Thorpe, trusty driver. We're gonna meet Jim. Laboratories. Hey, 